Hey everyone, hope you guys are doing great and welcome back to another prototype build video where we're going to resume building this magnificent airplane. So in the previous video we made a canopy for the long easy and let's see what we're going to make in this one. So firstly I'm going to show you guys how I modified the wing to an updated design for the wing to fuselage attachment as well as show you how I strengthened the upper wing surface. Now secondly I'm going to show you guys how I solved the issue of some unwanted anhedral and also explain the thought process and the decisions I made to solve the issue without having to alter the engine housing. Then we're going to build the side air intakes and finally we're going to make the leading edge root extension for the main wing and I'll go into detail how this aerodynamic part really functions. Hope you guys are excited for this one because I am pumped to get back to building. So to keep me motivated click the red subscribe button on your right and stay till the end. So first is the wing modification. Taking a closer look at the wing, you will notice there is some material protruding out. In the initial design, this protrusion was meant to be inserted into the fuselage, but in the updated design, this wasn't needed. So we're gonna have to cut it off. So first, I cut the back end for both the top and the bottom surfaces, then drew a reference line for the rest of the material and cut it off one by one, making sure I didn't accidentally cut off the wires. And then I repeated the same step for the other side as well. Now let's do a quick test to see how flush it is with the surface of the fuselage. As you can see, it's almost perfect. But before we move on, we need to fix one little thing. As you can see, the top surface of the wing and the spar has lost adhesion. It could be due to the stress on the spar causing the glue to fail. You could argue then why don't you just add more glue, should be a quick fix right? Well no, because if you look closely there is a small gap between the center of the spar and the upper wing surface. So the smaller the surface area the less effective the glue. Also more glue means more weight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of coro sheet and insert it into the gap like so and then add glue. So for that I made a simple design that could fit, then cut it out of coro and then glued it on and used a blade to apply some pressure and did the same for the other side. Next we're going to focus on the fuselage. So I made some new designs, cut them out and did a small test fit. So here I'm basically trying to cover that abrupt step in the fuselage and also to help smoothen the airflow. So I took that same design, cut it out from chart paper and then test fitted it. Then I stuck it to the sides. On the right I used super glue and some tape to hold it in place while it dried while on the left I used tape throughout. This was just to test which adhesive had better adhesion with respect to the coro sheet material. The test proved that super glue was much better and held the shape effectively, but it does require some patience to get a good finish. If you want the best of both, then first apply super glue and then reinforce it with tape. As you can see, both methods yield similar results and look nice as well. On to the next section solving the unwanted wing and anhedral. But before I go into how I solve this issue, let's first see what anhedral means. So basically anhedral is when the angle of the wing is inclined downwards with respect to a horizontal line, while dihedral is when the wing is inclined upwards. Dihedral increases lateral stability but limits maneuverability, while anhedral decreases lateral stability but increases maneuverability. Most airliners are stable while fighter jets are designed to be unstable. For this long easy, a neutral or zero degree angle is the best, but for my model, there was some anhedral, which is due to the main spar being located toward the front of the wing, coupled with the absence of the rear spar. The reason why I opted for a single spar was because of the engine bay location. So if I really wanted to implement a rear spar effectively, it would have to go through the engine bay which would affect my aim of having a universal power pod, so I came up with the following solutions. My first idea was to strengthen the main spar by making a smaller, similar shade spar 
that would be inserted between the wing halves and the fuselage. After testing this concept, I realized that the smaller spa wouldn't fit because of the sweep angle, so I had to ditch that idea. The second idea was to implement a rear spa without having to modify the engine bay, so I selected wood as my material and cut it according to the dimensions. Even though I no longer needed to modify the engine bay to accommodate the spar, I still had to make a few changes to the fuselage. For that, I printed some new plans, cut them and stuck them onto both sides of the fuselage. Then I marked the place to be cut and carefully cut the small spar slot as this section was reinforced on the inside with some coro sheet. After cutting it, I sanded it down and did the same for the other side. After which I inserted the wooden spar and the box spar housing and it all fitted pretty well. Then I test fitted the wings to see if it solved the problem. Turns out I reduced the anhedral but it's not a 100% neutral angle. So maybe due to the fact that I haven't glued it. So on to the next section we're going to prototype the side air intakes or side pods. Going to take these freshly printed plants and cut them out one by one. Initially, I had designed the side pods in such a way that the bottom plate would sit flat on top of the wing. But while designing, I didn't take into account the curvature of the wing. So this meant there was a huge gap between the intake bottom plate and the upper wing surface. So this forced me to redesign the side plate. Then I printed the plans and cut all the updated parts. Then I prepped the parts one by one, did a score cut on all the parts and remove the excess material. But while test fitting, I realized I had cut one of my parts in the wrong orientation. So basically, the top plate had to curve slightly downwards, but the part I cut was too strong in that direction. And this is why orientation of Coro Sheet is very important for maximum strength. And if you want to know more about Coro Sheet, check out my video I made where I explain its properties. While prepping the side plate, I thought I got some awesome footage. Turns out I forgot to press record. Wonderful. Then I cut the bottom slot and score cut the midsection to finish prepping the side plate. My idea was to extend the side plate downwards so it wouldn't affect the position of the bottom plate. As you can see, it fits pretty nicely. Now let's just test fit the side plate slot and it fits but not so well so i might have to increase the size of the insert now let's test with the whole intake assembly with the upper plate i'm also going to use a small inner element to give a more aesthetic appeal now let's put it on the fuselage straight away you might notice there's now two intakes instead of one so now air can pass through both the big upper intake and the small lower intake but as I test fitted the small wing extension, I noticed that there was a reasonable gap between the wing and the fuselage. And not only that, the angle between the wing and the small extension was a little off. So this meant there was a design or a build flaw. Another thing I noticed was the wing tip was not parallel to the fuselage. So just to demonstrate, if I hold the winglet against the table and then put it against the wing tip, you can see that there's a small angle. This eventually will lead to an angled winglet which can cause drag. Now double that drag because there's two winglets. All these observations help me conclude that the angle between the spar and the wing was not perfect. And this resulted in an angled wing as a whole. This proves that even the smallest imperfections can affect the airplane as a whole. This issue can only be corrected by finding the most suitable angle and is only possible if I make a completely new wing. But for now, let's focus on the other parts. Next, let's make the leading edge root extension. But in the next video. This video was kind of getting a bit too long. And I also have to refine the LERX a bit more. So this is what it looks like. And I'll explain about this in detail in the next video. So in order not to miss out, uh, don't forget to subscribe and leave a like. And for those of you who stayed till the end, thank you. And I'll see you guys next time.